Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial with OpenCV. Today we are going to look into object detection. So I can just hold up an apple or an orange, heck even my cell phone, lots of different objects. And I'm going to get my computer to tell me out loud using its voice what it saw inside of the frame. That's enough introduction. Let's get right into it. So the first thing that we need to do is install our dependencies. So we are going to import a couple of libraries. The first thing that we're going to import is OpenCV contribute Python. So we're going to say pip install OpenCV dash contrib dash Python. And some people ask me why I use this lately instead of just OpenCV Python, it's because uh, OpenCV Python does contain the main components that you need for the basic modules of OpenCV. But with OpenCV Contrib Python, it's going to contain some extra libraries uh, so that we have a little bit extra to work with. And so we're just gonna hit enter and that's going to start installing. Okay, and if you ever get a warning like I did where you need to update pip or anything, you can go ahead and do that as well. I'm just gonna copy and paste that. That should be just really quick. And there we go, perfect. After we have that installed, we are now going to go ahead and install clib. So pip install clib, okay? And we're gonna be using this for our object detection. So there's a library that's already learned what certain objects are. So we're just gonna install that. And depending on your internet connection, that should be rather quick. Very good. And then we are going to also allow our computer to say out loud what it saw. So if it sees me, it'll say I saw a person, or I saw an apple, an orange, so on and so forth. So we are going to import just a couple more things. We're going to say pip install gtts space play sound. Whoops. Play sound like that. And then finally, we are going to install pi object C, which is going to help with that sound be a little bit more efficient. So I'm gonna say pip three install capital P Y capital O B J capital C. Okay, so that will allow play sound to be a little bit more efficient. So I already have a couple of those installed, so it's gonna say already satisfied. For you, it will probably say successful. If you have any errors, just go back, rewind, make sure that you typed everything correctly. Otherwise, let's move on. So I'm just gonna slide down my window here and I'm going to now import CV2, import CV lib as CV, and then from cvlib.objectdetection import drawbox. So it's going to be drawing a box around our objects for us. So make sure you have two Bs for box, B, B, O, X. And then we're gonna say from G, T, T, S import G, capital T, T, S. Oops, I said G, T, A. I need to do G, T, T, S. And then finally, from play sound, import play sound. So there's one, two, three, four, five lines of imports, but that is everything that we are going to be using for this video. So if you need a little bit more time, you can go ahead and pause the video and continue that. Three days later. So what we wanna do now is now access our camera. Now, originally, when I was first building this and testing things out, I was just having it bring in a specific image. It was just gonna look at objects in the image. But I wanted this to be live, so it has a live feed, and we can detect all the objects in a live feed instead. So, we're going to access our cameras. So I'm gonna say video equals cv2.video capture and that takes an index. Now, for most of you, it might be index zero, but my web camera that I wanna be using instead, which is a lot more higher quality, is at index one. So you can just mess with those indexes as you please. 
um, but we're going to start with that. And now we are going to say while true, I'm now going to use my video capture and I'm going to unpack each frame into a variable called frame. So what we're gonna do is ret comma frame equals our video dot read. So unpack that. So now we're going through each frame and now we're gonna use that BB box where it's going to be seeing the objects. It's gonna draw a box around it. And we're also going to give it a label next to the box to tell us what the object is. So we're gonna say BB box, comma label, and then conf, okay? And conf is really just identifying what the object is. It's just gonna be returning some decimal numbers really. So I'm gonna say cv.detect common objects. And now we have to tell it where to get those objects from. So we need to say, get it from the frame. So that's gonna be each frame from my video feed. And finally, we are going to draw that box. So we're gonna say output image equals draw box. And now we need to give draw box the frame. I want it to get the box that it's going to uh, be drawing around. And we're also going to put the label in there and we'll stick conf in there. Very good. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and show the user what the image looks like. So I'm gonna say cv2 dot am show. And we want to show them the name of the window. So I'll just call this uh, object detection. You can call that whatever you want, comma. And now we gotta tell it output image. Okay, before we hit run, we're going to um, give this a wait key. So I'm gonna say if cv2.wait key delay of one, and we're going to check to see if the user is clicking a certain button. Um, you can say whatever button you want, but I'm gonna say if the user clicks on Q, some people like the space bar, you can just do a space, uh, do whatever you want. But I'm gonna say if the user says hits Q, I want you to break out of this loop. And after I hit Q, it breaks out of that window. So very good. So as you could see, that was already detecting me as a person, it even detected this as a tie, that's already working. So what I want this to do now is I want my program to take each of those labels that it finds in my screen and I want it to append or add to a list so that I have that list of data. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a list called labels. So let's come up here and we'll call this labels. Make sure this is outside of your loop so it doesn't accidentally rename itself inside the loop and just erase all the data. Um, and what we're going to say is, we'll do a for loop. We're gonna say for item in label. If item in labels, then we're just gonna have it pass. So that means if, if it already found a tie, this is gonna be checking multiple images. It's gonna be checking for objects in each frame. And so it's going to say maybe like a thousand ties. I don't want it to do that. I'm just gonna say, if you find a tie in there, then go ahead and put it in the list. But if tie is already in the list, don't add it to the list. So it's only gonna say tie one time. And you can alter this if you'd like, um, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. Um, if it's not already in the list, then I want you to labels.append, I want you to append that item. So that item will be added to this list called labels. And just to test that out, I'm going to come down here and print labels. And let's see if that works. Okay, and as you can see, here is my list called labels that it just printed. So it found a person and it found a tie. So very good. Uh, I know that this is working because if I didn't, it would be saying person 
a thousand times and a tie a thousand times. But it's only going to do it once because of this code here. So very good. So what I want this to do now is I wanted to take this uh, data called labels. So what I'm going to do now is write code uh, using string interpolation to tell me what it found more logically. For example, I wanted to say something like, I found a orange, a person, a book, a tie, a cell phone, an apple, so on and so forth. And so how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to create a for loop for label in labels. I want this to check to see if this is the first time it's reading out loud a label. So I'm gonna create some kind of iterator. So I'm gonna say i equals zero and I'm going to say here, if I is zero, then I want this to actually append to a list. because so I want this to sound a little bit more natural when it says it out loud. So I'm going to say new sentence equals an empty list. So I'm going to say if I is zero, then new sentence dot append. That means to add. And I want it to add, I'll use some string interpolation here. I found a, and I'll put label there. So if it's found a person, it'll say I found a person and I'll do a comma and comma. That'll give the speech out loud to give a little bit of a pause. So we'll see how that goes. And then I'm going to say if it is not equal to zero, then new sentence dot append and I'll use string interpolation again. And I'm gonna say a uh, label like so. And then once that is done, we are going to increment i. So I'm gonna say i plus equals one. So the first thing it finds, i is gonna be zero. So the first thing it finds is gonna say, I found a hat and a person, a book an apple, so on and so forth. So very good with that. Uh, and just to make sure that this is all going to be all in one string for our speech to work properly after this, uh, let's go ahead and use the join function. So I'm just going to say print space dot join new sentence. So that will turn this list into a string. So let's go ahead and test that out. Perfect. So after hitting run and after it found those things, check it out. It added each of those things to the list. So it said, I found a person and a tie, a orange, a chair, a donut, an apple. Again, this uh, might look kind of weird with the commas, but it's going to help with the pauses when the computer says it out loud. So very good. If we have that working just fine, then let's go ahead and add our speech part of this. So towards the top of our project, I'm going to now add our speech. So let's go ahead and define a function. So def, we'll call this speech, and it's gonna receive some text. And if you've seen my virtual assistant where you build your own Siri or Alexa, this is the same exact function that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna say print that text because we wanna be able to see it as well. And I also want to set my language to whatever I want. I'm gonna set mine to, uh, we'll just call it, yeah, we'll say English, so E-N. If you wanna do Spanish, it's E-S, or Japanese, it's J-A. You can always look those up on Google if you'd like to, but we'll do English for now. And then we'll give this some output. So output equals, now we're gonna use GTTS. So GTTS, which takes some text, which is going to be equal to the text that we're gonna send it, comma. Now it's looking for the property of language and so that will be our language. And then finally, it's going to ask how fast we wanna go. So I'm gonna say slow equals false, just like that. Now what we need to do is save 
the output into a file. So what we need to do is we need to save that audio somewhere in our project. So come into your project and let's create a new directory and we're just gonna call it sounds. So here's sounds. I forgot to change the name of the project, so don't worry about that, but sounds is just underneath that directory. So with that in place, we can now save. So we're gonna say output.save. Now we're going to tell it where to save. So I'm gonna say dot slash, dot slash sounds, and now call your file whatever you want. I'm just gonna say output.mp3. So this will be a mp3 file. And then finally, we're going to have it play the sound. So we're gonna use the play sound library that we imported up here. And we're gonna say play sound, which is gonna be that same exact location, output.mp3. And now we gotta send whatever text we want over here. So down here, we have a print. Instead of print, I'm gonna say speech, because that's the name of our function. So that will send our string to our function, and it's going to take our text and make it into actual speech. It is then saving, and then we are going to play that sound. Let's see if this works. So hopefully you could have heard that, but it did say I found a person and a tie, an apple, an orange, a cell phone. So that is working great. Congratulations if you just accomplished that. That was really cool, pretty simple. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any requests, please let me know. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe so that you are notified of my next tutorial. Thank you so much and happy coding.